On Jim's EV Adventures, we're always exploring the latest and greatest information on EVs, specifically the Chevrolet Bolt and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Those are the two vehicles that we have in our family. But today we're going to be talking about the 2027 Bolt, and it's a fan favorite, and it's finally making a comeback. You know, in 2023, early 2023, they canceled the model line, and less than six months later, Mary Barra announced that they would be bringing it back. We were hoping for a 2026 model to be available sometime around now, but it's been delayed by a year. So let's get into the specifics of what we do know and what we do not know about the 2027 Bolt. First, a little bit of history. In 2017, when the Bolt first came out, it was a game changer. It was a vehicle that had around 250 miles of range for under $40,000. That was something that was unheard of at the time. And this next generation Bolt is not just a rerun of the 2023 Bolt. Nope, it's a step up from where we're at right now and we're gonna talk about the specifics. First thing that we're gonna talk about is the price. The price is going to be between $28,000 and $30,000 as a starting price. That's without incentives because as you know, the incentives are disappearing as we speak. By the end of September 2025, there will be no more EV incentives. Okay, so now that we know what the price is gonna be, let's talk some of the specifics about the technology that's gonna be installed. As you can see from the spy photos, from here forward and here back, there's been a, an upgrade in the way the vehicle looks. So it's basically a front fascia and a rear end upgrade, if you will, and I'll show you some side-by-side -side pictures from the spy photos that we do have. So what I've done here is I've superimposed the 2027 spy photos on the left side of the screen compared to the 2023 model EUV on the right side of the screen. Inside the red circle you can see that the panels fit together with the front quarter panel in the identical same place as the front quarter panel on the 2023 model. The same thing is true of the shark's tail inside the green circle and then down on the rear door in the blue circle. So the body of the vehicle is identical to the 2023 EUV. But now let's dig into the rear end just a little bit. If you look at the lift gate, it's pretty much identical, but you see a change across the top of the lift gate just above the tag. There's a slight change in the uh, rear brake lights and how they wrap around. They're a little bit bigger and then if you go below the lift gate, the rear bumper is now white instead of black as it is in the 2023 model and you go below the lift gate and you see the black trim again. The backup light is in the same place but what is the turn signals on the 2023 model have now been lowered to just be running lights at a lower level and there's no turn signal or brake at all in those lights. There are also the reflectors. Now the most stark change for me is the front end. You have a black line across the front end just where the Chevrolet emblem is on the 2023 model. So instead of that shark's nose look, you now have more of an Equinox EV look to the front end. The area below the white trim between the headlights is now more of a honeycombed open shape with probably some active shutters in there as well. But the way the front end connects to the rest of the quarter panels on the front end and the hood is the same. Now the interesting thing is the charge port door, again, identical in the same location. This time though it's J3400 or NAX. But what we are going to talk about that's more important than that is the battery. This particular bolt uses NMC chemistry in prismatic packs. That means they're flat packs. The 2027 Bolt will be using LFP chemistry, lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Not sure what type, but they're going to first come from CATL in China. General Motors struck a deal with CATL over a year ago, so we're not sure how the 
tariffs are going to affect that. We're not sure what the price is going to be, but we do know that General Motors will likely make a profit on the first versions that they deliver. So for the first year and a half to two years until General Motors can start producing their own LFP packs, they're going to be using CATL packs. Now, it might be speculation on my part, but I think since General Motors struck this deal before the tariffs were announced, the price is locked in. So they're not going to be paying any extra, any tariffs on top of what they're already paying for those LFP packs from CATL. I could be wrong. We're going to find out as time goes forward. But trust me, General Motors is not going to be losing money on these particular cells. The most important thing to look for in this new battery pack is energy density. Currently, the energy density of the Bolt EUV battery pack is 0.14 watt hours per kilogram. A 65 kilowatt hour battery gives you approximately 238 miles of range. That battery pack weighs 465 kilograms. The energy density of the CATL batteries is 0.15 watt hours per kilogram, typical of today's LFP batteries. Using the same weight, that would increase the capacity of the battery to about 70 kilowatt hours. However, the LFP batteries are denser, so you can fit more batteries into the same volume, even though they weigh more. So increasing the weight of the LFP batteries by 8% will give you approximately a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack. With an efficiency of 4.05 miles per kilowatt hour, the range would easily be better than 300 miles. But also keep in mind, since they're doing a front end and rear end redesign, they're gonna improve the drag coefficiency so it will not be as big of a wind drag as this particular model is right here. Another upgrade that you can expect from this is the charging performance. This particular model using the CCS1 charging standard only charges at a maximum of 55 kilowatts. You can expect that the next General Motors Bolt version will charge at at least 150 and possibly 175 kilowatts. So that's a threefold improvement, which means you'll be able to pump in about 125 to 150 miles of range in less than 30 minutes and get yourself back out on the road should you be doing a road trip. That is extremely efficient. On the inside, we expect to see some upgrades. Now this is the top end model. I have some very nice leather seats in here, but there's not a whole lot of bolstering here on the driver's seat. But I do expect that they're going to take some of the design cues from the Equinox and the Blazer EV and put some better bolstering and make those seats a little more comfortable than they are right now. And let's talk about the infotainment screen. Right now it's a 10.2 inch infotainment screen. I look for that design to change. It's probably going to be more like you see in the Equinox and the Chevrolet Blazer with about a 12 inch or larger screen. What are they going to be missing? Well, as of right now, they have not announced that Apple CarPlay or Android Auto will be available as it is on my 2023 model. That could change as time moves forward, but do keep in mind that people like myself like to have a standard uniform type of display on the infotainment system between all the various models of cars that I drive. You can't get that on the Tesla, and that's primary reason I have never considered a Tesla. I don't want to be locked into something that the car manufacturer tells me that I must use, as they're doing right now on the Equinox and Blazer and Silverado EV line. That may change across their product line as time moves forward, and especially with the advent of the CarPlay Plus that's coming out next month. Finally, what else you can expect? This has the sun and sound package, which means it has Super Cruise. But I call it Super Cruise Lite because it doesn't have all the mapped roads for Super Cruise, because it doesn't have all the cameras necessary to use those mapped roads. But I would expect that the 2027 Bolt line will have a full version of Super Cruise. That's exciting. That is a plus upgrade compared to the 2023 model. 
So the real question is when can you expect to get your hands on the 2027 model Bolt? As of right now, I expect August or September of 2026 as a 2027 model. What do I think? Well, I think that the 2027 model Bolt will be an affordable, easy to use, fun to drive, and very nice upgrade to what you see right here with the 2023 Bolt. Even though most of the cabin is gonna be very similarly designed on the outside, you can expect to see some magnificent upgrades to the interior and the infotainment system on, on the inside. But I want to hear from you. What do you expect to see in the 2027 Bolt? I know there have been a lot of people on YouTube speculating and pontificating about what they expect to see in the 2027 Bolt, but I want to hear from you. So please do like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and leave your comments about what you're expecting to see in the 2027 Bolt. That's gonna be it for the 2027 Bolt. It's shaping up to be a very, very nice vehicle. And despite its lack of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I expect it's gonna be one of the best selling EVs in the history of the world. The Equinox has taken off like nobody expected. And with this coming in at a lower price with an LFP platform, I expect it to go off the charts. And I might even make the prediction that it's gonna pass the Model 3 in popularity over the course of the next three to four years. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody, and I will see you all real, real soon.